Well, I don't even seem to be getting into any fights. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's audio comedy right there. Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy. I'm Jeff Ekman. And I'm Ryan Kazmiski. And here we go, Season 2, Episode 8. It is Episode 8. It is. And we are burning our way through Final Fantasy 4. That's right. Where we last left off, Yang and Sid sacrificed themselves. An orgy of self-sacrifice. <laughs> yep. We busted out of the underworld mm-hmm. and closed the hole behind us. For now, we're back in the top side. But I was still questioning the sacrificing element. Right. I mean, how necessary was it? Was it even a sacrifice? It's yeah. unclear. It is unclear. I mean, is there anything else to say, or should we just move on? Like, I don't know. Let's just go. Let's just ke- get these people moving. Yeah, yeah. Everybody is sacrificing themselves for what? To save the world, dude. For us to do, for like, what? We're gonna have terrible survivor's guilt about this entire thing. Yeah. There's no way this game ends with Cecil living, right? Like, he helped make all this happen. Everyone died because of him. Everybody's and sacrificing themselves. He's the themselves. only one who lives. Like you, that that's what. Be. That's what. I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm missing. Because that. That's what makes sense. Is like. Because I'm like, what? Like everybody's sacrificing themselves, and then we're gonna like walk away and be like, man, thank God they all died. No, so I no, could no. like live happily no, ever after. Adding up to something. It's definitely adding up to. You're gonna have to sacrifice yourself, Paladin. Mm-hmm. We're back in the overworld. Do you want to take over? I will, I'll place the order and uh, I want to use the bathroom. Okay. I can take. I well, you place the order and then you, yeah, you keep going. Mm-hmm. I I I don't feel like I need to stop. I love that we didn't end last episode on that moment. Like. I go to the bathroom, it's such a clear ending. We're taking a break for food. (laughs) (laughs) Haley. Haley, listen to me. There's some things you need to know about life that you need to understand. You need to understand that playtime is not all the time. And I think you get that, mostly. You also need to understand that, you know, you got four legs. You, you think you can keep track of all those legs all the time? I doubt it. I doubt you can do it. So, what I need you to do is just not take any unnecessary risks, okay? This is my new method of dog training, mm-hmm. where you just speak to the dog as though it is an adult human right. who has four legs. <laughs> That's the only difference is they don't have the opposable thumbs. And very furry and can't speak. Right. They can't communicate to you. But you communicate to them with respectfully. Right. And I don't think anyone's tried it before is the thing. <laughs> it's different It's different from the dog whisperer where he doesn't actually whisper to dogs. He, no. He like snaps at them and... And this is the true dog whisperer. You're whispering this to the, the dog. The real like, dog whisperer. Hey, just relax. Just calm down. Just calm down. It's cool. You explain to them how time works. Later today, we're going for a walk, but right. not right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think she gets it. You uh, laying down the law over here? <laughs> just explaining. <laughs> explaining the rules of the land? Yeah. So we go back to Baron, and as we've been taught, we start talking to everybody. Yeah, and now instead of being like, the king seems off, they're like, whoa, the king was off. (laughs) The king was definitely (laughs) off. Monster was turning into our king? That's not how I would phrase it. Yeah, wait, no, the, uh, the monster wasn't becoming the king. It's not like there was a monster around who was rising to power, who was becoming, like, the king was replaced by a monster. Yeah. A monster wasn't becoming your king. Maybe it's just as unclear to all these people what happened as it is to us. They're like, I heard that the king was a monster. Right. I don't know what. <laughs> we may have also been under the monster's control. Maybe. That may have been a thing that was true. <laughs> it might not be. Oh my god. How's that respect method working out for you? I mean, that was just the first man <laughs> right, to dog right. talk. <laughs> yeah, repetition. Yeah, you gotta have many talks with your dog. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Why? 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 Why?
why. Boss, order us to attach this hook to the Enterprise. No, it won't take long. While we're walking around Baron, we talk to one of the many people in town, and it turns out that he was the apprentice of Sid's that Sid was talking about. Mm -hmm. So these kids start going to work on the airship. And it's like, the last time we saw Sid... He blew himself up. He blew up. himself up. And now his employees are like, oh, our latest orders from Sid are to put a hook on your airship. Right. So they start putting a hook on the airship, Yeah, I guess. I can't tell if Sid died or not. Seems like he did. What are they doing? They're like attaching stuff to the ship. So, you know, they're upgrading it. Oh, I see. Are they... Twins? They look like twins. Now, oh, we can carry the hovercraft around with us. That's cool. Oh, sweet. Whoa, I point? still can't get a read on if Sid is dead. Yeah. The way they were just talking about him, he's definitely not dead. So now we, pick we up the upgraded hovercraft. the thing. Where's the hovercraft? It gets up north and to the left slightly because there's like a desert up there. So we scoot around the world trying to find the hovercraft, which we eventually do and pick it up and... Once it's on the ship, I'm like, now what? Yeah. What are we... <laughs> what, well, cool. We can take the hovercraft with us. Where? Uh... <laughs> okay. Now what? Uh... So we go back to Tiny Town and start walking around talking to people. It's a tiny store. Mm -hmm. They've only got room for one item. <laughs> <laughs> None of these buildings are small, though. So not far from Tiny Town, we wind up finding the Adamant Grotto. Yeah, this is a place you can only get to the, for, with the hovercraft. Right. So this is what the whole purpose was for. You move the hovercraft from one area of the map to another, and that allows you to get from one area of the map to yet another. And yeah. then you find the cave, and you're like, oh, you need a rat tail? Okay. Yeah, Grotto Adamant. <laughs> Bringing back the Adamant item loop right. from the first game, yeah, but it, altered slightly. It's very slightly different, but it's basically the same. Grotto Adamant. Have we been here? No. We had no way to get here. My dad found a funny ore. And you know what? He collects tails. Is... Wait a minute. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you unless you have a tail for me. I want to point out, that's T-A-I-L, not T-A-L-E, which it totally could have been. Right. I don't want to talk to you unless you have a tail for me. You no, know, tell me a story. Mm-hmm, and then I'll let you pass. No, he wants a moldy old rat, tail rat from a rat. Tail. yeah. Well, I mean, these little people who live with frogs and pigs, they're freaks, man. The, the tiny, freaks. The tiny people? Yeah. <laughs> the tiny people. Careful not there. The don't say people. that wrong. <laughs> We gotta find a tail again. A fucking rat's tail? In the first season, you you had the thought of, we're gonna see a lot in this game of like, oh, that's why it's like that in the later games. Right, because it's like, because it was always done that way. And in the, yeah, in this situation, like, it makes no sense that you would trade a rotting rat tail for adamant. Right. But that's how it is in the first game. So right. it's totally just a callback. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it doesn't make any sense outside of the world of Final Fantasy. Yeah, we, we, ha we now know that's why it's like that in this game, mm -hmm. because it's because that's how they've always done it. To okay, prove so we're not supposed to be here yet again. Are these but... Baham Wait a minute. So we don't have any tail. No. Let me give you a carrot. Nothing happened. Wish I had a fifth person. I have a feeling in this cave you're gonna find somebody. Mmm. I have a feeling they are going to be a ninja. I'm just saying, there's weapon types that we've seen that we can't uh, use still. There aren't random encounters in here, right? No. Oh, there's just a monster. What a fucking... God damn it, I love this game. It's just like uh, find the treasure puzzles. It's... I love these. I can relax and do these. Ah. Thought you were monsters. Ah. Real monsters. No, the new show. Ah, thought you were monsters. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> oh, you're not. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> Ah, thought you were monsters. <laughs> so we make it to where we're supposed to go with the hovercraft, which mm -hmm. is a cave near the ruined castle of Eblon, right. which is where I died because of that monster in a box. Yeah, that back was when. <laughs> back in, I think, episode five. But now we're supposed to be here, and all the refugees from that castle are living in a cave that you can only get to with a hovercraft. And I also want to point out, I was totally right. All these people are ninjas. This is Ninja Town. <laughs> Our found... next party member is definitely going to be a ninja. We found Ninja Town. <laughs> 
what is this town? <laughs> I don't know. I bet this is all the people who lived in that other castle that blew up ran over here. Oh. They're gonna tell you what happened. Yeah, they're all gonna be like, we used to live in this ruin that's filled with treasure. You should go check it out. And I'm gonna be like, my guess is they're gonna be like, we had the best king ever. His name was Golbez. And then one day he went mad and he blew up the castle. Yeah. <laughs> and now we live here in terrible squalor. And my parents are dead. Everybody's <laughs> parents are dead. Oh, nobody get no, yeah, everyone's parents are dead. But they get magic powers in exchange. It all works out. Expensive in. I know. For being for such a show. I think the reasoning of this one is they're like, where else are you going to go? What are you going to do, not sleep here? You're welcome to go back out into the water cave. You can go sleep <laughs> there. Yeah. That sounds like a real comfortable bed. <laughs> yeah. It's like the way they charge you on the inside of a baseball stadium or something. What are you going to do, not drink beer? Right. <laughs> Watch baseball all day? I don't think so. <laughs> it's fucking baseball. It's we boring. lost our place to live. This is our home now. See? You nailed it. Weapons and we've got Well, crazy I don't know, because half of that was that Golbez was going to be... Right, we are. we'll see if that pans out. All right, what, uh... So we're in the weapons and armor shop, gearing up, as you do, and something finally happens for the first time in this game, which is we hit the end of our inventory. Mm -hmm. And we have to go in and hit sort. Sort it, it out. happened. Sort out your bag. Um, I think it literally just because I like I was buying them ten at a time. Yeah, but still. Yeah. The bag is full. We decide to sell the wind staff. Sell the wind. Sell the wind. That's the name of my new play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Going up <laughs> next month at the. Uh, They're calling it the next the uh, North Hollywood. Glen Glare, you get Yeah. <laughs> Sell the wind. Where did those monsters come from? I can't believe that. We ninjas are defeated this oh, easily. Oh, they're all ninjas. I'm trying to <coughs> find it. We're getting a ninja. I don't know. The king and queen were taken when the prince was gone. To rescue the king and queen, the prince is digging a hole into the Tower of Pabble. Just digging a hole into it. <laughs> but I haven't seen him lately. I'm going to protect my mom. She is pregnant. The prince will beat up those bad guys, right? My dad's gonna beat up their dad. Let's find this ninja prince. This may be the end of the ninjas of Elbon. Well, we can't let that happen. Especially from what we learned on ninjaencyclopedia.com. As we're walking through this cave area, there's just treasure everywhere. Lining the walls. Mm -hmm. It'd be like if I lived in a big house and you were like, oh, hey, I'm looking for soap. You're out in the bathroom. And I'd be like, well, it's in a box on this other side of the house. And you like, gotta enter the catacombs. Yeah, like, where, about halfway through, there's, like, a little alcove. Where are the hand towels? In a different box, about 20 feet away. <laughs> Further down yeah. the alcove. Like, yeah. my storage There's is, another alcove. Your storage is just, like, all over the place. It's not consolidated in any one area. Yeah. But do you think decides, like, and the, well, I'm gonna put one treasure here. And then oh, one, like, over in this corner. Like, what? How does the, a cave get like this? Oh, you mean in practicality, not the level designers. Totally design. practicality. I mean, like, like, like taking it for what it really is is not a video game, but like a world. Like, I don't know. I, I guess, I mean, it looks like this is a tunneled out cave so you'd be like this nook is gonna be for these boxes yeah totally a minecraft mindset yeah you totally. like, gotta make a new box nook yeah i'm gonna put the boxes in there and fill them with all the coal and then i'm gonna go get more coal oh, and make it's another, be good. another box nook 30 feet away <laughs> do, you, do you think of the future like the what i posited earlier about houses where everything is spread out like there will be architects who grew up playing minecraft who will design houses that are just like oh man i didn't even just think about that built for hoarding shit 
the, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just love like you hear all this stuff about like the modern surgeons in medicine are like better than the old surgeons because they grew up playing video games and all like the hand eye coordination and stuff. You don't think about how it affects other industries like architecture and or <laughs> just life kids, habits or life habits. Just yeah, fill boxes with stuff, Gr- stash them. Growing up on <laughs> Minecraft, <laughs> stash. I mean, if people are thinking that violent video games cause shootings or whatever, right. then Minecraft is g- going to cause infrastructural problems <laughs> in the world. Yeah. I mean, the parents got to bring the kid to the psychiatrist because she's like, he just won't stop digging holes. He's got a tunnel system underneath our neighborhood. I don't even know what's down there. I can't go down there. I get lost. There's like kids in the future at their psychiatrists and they're asking like, so why do you have this? Box full of rock serum. Well, I might need that stuff later. <laughs> right, exactly. What's what's coming later? Well, who knows? <laughs> what about all of these? You continue to get more boxes of rocks, though. And why like, why don't well, you just go for a walk? Why, why don't you just go for a well, walk? Why go for a walk when you could dig a hole? Put that dirt in a box, put the box in your room, go back, dig another hole. Argue with that psychiatrist. Exactly. I think that's what they call compulsive behavior. All right. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, like you build these nooks just for the boxes. Right. So we're making our way through the tunnels, and eventually we run into a ninja who is in the process of challenging Rubicant, the fiend of fire. Yeah, we've been chasing Rubicant all over the world. And this is a repeat of when we met the Karate Man, Yang. Not the Ninja Man, Mm -hmm. but the Karate Man. When we met the... (laughs) We show up and he's halfway through fighting somebody Mm -hmm. and then we got to hop in the fight and then it's like, go with us forever. Yeah, I mean, now that we lost our karate man, we got to replace him with an equal or better ninja man. Hey, Rubicant, I was waiting for this day. Rubicant says, have I met you before? I am Elman's Prince Edge. Oh, yeah, we're going to get the Edge. Not another cinematic fight. Oh, sure. (laughs) So we watch Edge fight Rubicant, and Edge just gets his ass kicked. Yeah, Edge loses. Rubicant escapes again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rubicant! But, uh... You Rubicant defeat me. <laughs> Fuck that. No, we're not putting that in. How could I lose? You did it alone, and you didn't have anyone on your side to sacrifice himself for you. Yeah, you didn't have any children to sacrifice their lives after you've orphaned other, many others. It's complicated. So Edge tells us that he is the Prince of Elbon and also been trained as a ninja, which I guess is rare that a prince would be trained as a ninja. Not of Elbon, though. I think everyone in Elbon is a ninja. Whatever the case. (laughs) It's confusing. (laughs) And we all kind of sit around standing over Edge's, like, hurt body, going, taking stock of the situation, I Mm -hmm. guess. Tella, Yang, and even Sid. Okay, Sid is dead. Okay, that's confirmation. Sid's dead. (laughs) We lost them all. All! Finally, someone's freaking out about this. (laughs) For, For once. Hey, hey. And it's just like, hey, come on. Hey, come on. Shut up about it. Rydia, sob, sob. You know, finally, somebody's showing a little emotion around here. I know. Can't keep the pretty girl crying. Why don't we work together on this? Considering the fact that he's wounded, he sure bluffs. What does that mean? I think it's like this guy's wounded on the ground and he's like acting like kind of flipping about all this. Like, hey, can't let a pretty girl cry. You know, we gotta get it tough. Yeah, yeah. So standing over Edge's body, Rosa yells out the classic phrase, Cure two! Cure two! (laughs) (laughs) That's a hilarious thing to yell out. Thanks, girl. You're cute too. Oh, we got our rakish ninja Ninja edge. Edge wakes up, takes one look at Rosa, and immediately starts hitting on her. Yeah. (laughs) For real. Rosa's used to that kind of behavior, though. (laughs) He wakes up and she's like, you're cute, too. Well, he's no karate man, but... He's no Bono. Great, we're back in this place. Fuck. I've had enough of this, but actually... (laughs) <laughs> we're back, right back in the Tower of Babel. Like, yeah. we just left, came to the surface, got our airship back, and now we're, like, fucking back in here. And it's, like, the last dungeon that we just did, and it's, like, what if you just did the dungeon again? 
It looks exactly the same. <laughs> anyway, Ryan wants me to take back over, and I'm I'm eating right now, and I'm like, give me a minute. Well, I know, because you were f- so frustrated with doing the last one. I was like, what needs to happen is you need to keep playing, because you're like on the edge right now, yeah. and you, ne- you need to keep going. I'm getting, I'm going to the theater. I'm on it. There's all new enemies. Blade Man totally is Blade different. Man. They're totally different. Totally different. Blade Man, not Sword Man. No, no. Why are even the same guys? Shut the fuck up. It's the, it makes the game completely different. Shut up! There's... I'm coming, alright? Give me a minute. Yeah, no rush. <laughs> what the fuck? Cecil just went down in one shot? Yeah, they have an instant death thing. Fuck that. My old nemesis. <laughs> I know, I was telling you this would be back. <laughs> <laughs> I think right now Haley is looking for a toy that she lost under the couch, mm-hmm. which is a problem because she, she looks at us like, where, it, like, go get it. And we're like, I don't know where it is. Yeah, you go get it. No one knows where you put it, Haley. It's gone. She'll find it eventually. It's gone forever. It's gone. It's probably, she'll probably find it in the reset button on the machine. Yeah, that's probably where it is. No, you went the wrong way. This is where we came from, right? I passed an open chest, if that's what you're... (laughs) Oops. Oops. Yeah, I went the wrong way for a little bit before realizing. But also, I just found a middle sword. Middle sword? Short, middle, and long. Yeah, I've heard of short swords. I've heard of I've long never swords. Heard of a middle sword. I've never heard of a middle sword. I'm sure there is effectively a middle sword, but it's not called a middle sword. What? Uh, yeah, what are you talking about? A sword that's between a short sword and a long sword. Right, but like, like you wouldn't call it a. No, middle that's what I'm saying. It's not called that. I'm, <laughs> saying, I'm sure they could have called it something more appropriate. <laughs> right. <laughs> Or just a sword. Because it's not, you know, like, it's just, it's a standard sword. So we reach the second top of the Tower of Babel. The the top on the outside. (laughs) Uh, The top on the top. The top on the top. Not the top underground. Mm -hmm. The hat on the hat. Right. And (laughs) and this is where we meet Edge's parents. Yeah. And this is a plot point that I flip back and forth between thinking, like, it's really interesting how they did this, and simultaneously it feels like there's a chunk of the game missing how right. they did this. Yeah. <laughs> because like they're, we're about to see like a huge emotional payoff for a story that we just heard about. That's the thing. <laughs> we literally just met Edge. Like, had this been Yang and Yang's story that like it turned out Yang's parents were right. turned into like then we would care more about it inherently. Like, but this is like a new dude who's fighting his monster parents, and it's like tragic. Kind of. It, it's effectively like we had a scene where it's like, Edge, have you met everybody? And he's like, hey, I'm in the middle of something very intense right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come with me. And yeah. then you do this thing. <laughs> Dad, Mom. Now we're getting this is Edge's parents. Deep backstory on people we just met. Yeah, no shit. Payoff for things that weren't even planted. <laughs> I'm glad you're fine. So am I. Edge, Edge. Come. come. One us. of us. <laughs> One of us. One of us. To where? To the dark place. What? What? Yeah, Edge's parents do that fake out where it's like, come with us to the evil land. Yeah. What happened is Dr. Luggage... Oh, yeah. Turned Edge's parents into, like, Frankenstein monsters. Which is different from replacing them with monsters. I know. They weren't replaced. What the fuck? They were, like... (laughs) Put, they were like their arms were cut off and had monster arms put on. And they, okay, so we know mind control doesn't work. Amnesia doesn't work. Replacing them with monsters doesn't work. What about turning them into right, monsters? Right, turn them into monsters. We got a new idea, Golvez. Right. It blows my mind. <laughs> Mom, Dad, what's wrong with you guys? You look, you look sort of weird. Like, look at them. <laughs> There's no way these look like his parents. <laughs> like, I mean, they're like monstery monsters. Yeah, they, they don't look like people even a little bit. Beasts in, in a big way. Yeah. I mean, what if it is? 
<laughs> I mean, I guess they could. I don't know how they could work. Okay, sneak means steal. I mean, she looks like a little off. You sure. know, but... You don't think that she could be, like, a little bit part monster? I mean, she might be. They became conscious. Oh my god. Oh, they are gonna be horrified when they look in the mirror. So partway through the fight, Edge's parents, like, their saner minds take control, mm -hmm. and they totally pull, like, at the end of the fly of, like, putting the shotgun to his head, like, kill me. Yeah, They're yeah. like... They're like, Edge, <laughs> like, you must kill us. And then they let you kill them. Right. Which would be this insanely intense dramatic moment. Right. But you just met Ed. Like, you don't know any of it. <laughs> You've just never like, met these parents. They've never been mentioned. But yeah, like, it's genuinely sad where they're like, we're normal now. We're just in the shape of monsters. And we're like, they have to die. It, But it is totally like this level of storytelling that is not even in the first game at all. Like <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's definitely... There's emotional thought involved in this. Yeah, like, they, you think it's a boss fight, and it's not even. It's right. literally just they make you kill these people right. while they're telling you that they love you. Which is fucking <laughs> insane and it awesome. Is, yeah. yeah, give this game the credit that it's due. I'm shitting on it for not, like, nailing the larger structure with, that that's within, but, like, that alone... Is good shit. Yeah. We're, We're no, no longer, longer human. human. You don't say. No shit. <laughs> but just hear me out. Being a monster totally kicks ass. You. We must not, not live long. <laughs> and you're just wasting them right now. I'm just. You're just tooling on them while they, they while they're like. Had to kill his own monster parents. That's a pretty rough, fucked up thing. Rough kid. Yeah, that's. Sorry to hear that, Edge. They should have done this with Before a character we that we, like, knew from the beginning. Yeah, I was gonna say, if you had known him and his parents from the beginning of the game, this and would be this a is real... What, yeah, what, this would be a real moment that's, like, pretty nuts. Yeah, what the fuck? They just didn't have time, you know, it's like... <laughs> but how... But it's, like, so perfect for having been set up. Like, it's so easy to set that up. I don't know. No, please. I feel like, so far playing this, I felt like there's stuff where I'm like, oh, they didn't have time to flesh this out in the way they wanted. Like, when that girl comes back from her, she's like, I'm back and I'm magic now. I'm like, oh, I bet at one point they totally were like, you're going to go, after you get split up by Leviathan, you're going to go play as all of them and do all their adventures. And then they'll all meet back up. Like, I bet that was on the table at one point. Yeah! Guard. No! no. <laughs> yeah, no. Alright, so Edge's parents are dead. No sacrifice, but... Wretched, wretched luggage. luggage. <laughs> How dare he! Rubicant, I'm not gonna forgive you. Never. Not today. Not tomorrow. Not, not even the day after that. Not on Friday. Never. N-E-V-E-R. Luggage turned... Your parents and the monsters on his own. See, Rubicant seems all right. He's I like, apologize he's for like, that. Like I didn't do that. I already said luggage was a dirt bag. I apologize for that. This is something that it took me a while to like wrap my head around and understand what was happening. But now that I do, I fucking love it. Mm -hmm. Which is that the last fiend, the fiend of fire, Rubicant, is like a nice guy. Yeah, he's like the most reasonable and calculated of all the fiends. He's like, this is my job to be the fiend, and mm -hmm. I obviously have to do that. But I also have, like, respect for my opponent. He lives by, like, a code. Like, he wants right. to win in, like, a fair fight. Exactly. You know? And I, I just... The way every monster is in almost every Final Fantasy is that they don't, like, have, like, a nuanced understanding of their role in society. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are just monsters. If you play D&D, Rubicant is totally lawful evil. He's totally totally in a place where he's like look what luggage did to your parents he's chaotic evil right. that yeah. was a step that was mm -hmm. crossed the line right that i'm lawful evil i'm not like the others you see i want to play fair i believe him i believe he does shut up he let him live and he was like come back where you're stronger <laughs> you'll never gain real strength as long as you're swayed by emotions dude i'm trying to help you out here bro i'll, I'll show, show you the, the power, power. Nothing good sure ever happens when somebody, somebody says, says I'll you, show you my power. You power. <laughs> <laughs> of anger. Rage drew out Edge's hidden powers. Edge acquired Flood and Blitz. Oh. 
Edge kind of fills up his rage meter, which like mm-hmm. explodes into some like ninja abilities. Yeah, he, now he gets has. ninja magic. I see, but my cloak of flame cannot be tre- penetrated even by cold. Not even by cold? Why? Isn't that what cloaks are specifically for? Now I was- Rubicant also starts dropping hints of how to beat him. <laughs> yeah, the way they're talking, it's almost like they're having the fight, but they're little kids, where he's like, well, now I have flood powers. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, well, not even flood can pierce my cloak. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, well, I'm going to use my ninja rage. And he's and- like, ah, oh, but I will dodge. Oh, <laughs> uh, his cloak is open. Yeah. <laughs> Restore you to full strength, right with all your might. I had your rage. Okay, here we go. You, he's, he, at least he healed you before you fight him. Oh, nice. Wee. Shiva. Dude, you're doing wonderful damage. Yeah, we gotta... Uh, he's, I know he's a nice guy, but maybe you shouldn't have killed him. I mean, he's evil, but he's good evil. You know what I mean? Like, he's elementally evil, but he's alright by me. Well, you beat him. We beat Rubicant. Mm-hmm. He accepts defeat like a gentleman. Yep. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I see your strategy. You teamed up. Yeah. Well, we, I, we'll I, you got me of, this I'll time. I'll take note of that. Yeah. <laughs> we learn from my opponent. Weak people can join forces. Eh, that's fair, I guess. I admire you, warriors. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> you know what? I'll let you unite, unite you know? Dad. Mom. Mom. I avenged you. <laughs> and Edge, after he immediately avenges his mom and dad, right. and is now over it, just like everybody <laughs> else gets over shit in this game. Yep. His citizens, I guess, right? Yeah, he's like the king his, now. He was the prince, now, and now yeah. now he's killed the king. <laughs> yeah, now he killed the king and assumed the <laughs> throne. The throne, like Hamlet. Or, yeah. Wait, did Hamlet? Hamlet didn't kill his own dad. It was the opposite of that. <laughs> <laughs> this is an anti-Hamlet. And now we catch Edge up on our story, Yeah, is what happened. Yeah. Now, now that we've gone through Edge's little journey, we're like, oh, we gotta stop Golbez. And he's like, say what? Yeah, and it, we're like... Here's who we are. Here's who Golbez is. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down. Have yeah. a seat, Edge. No, I never caught your names. Who are you anyway? Who's Golbez? <laughs> can you? Can we all introduce each other? We go over it again. And he decides that he should come with us. Yep. Well, first, we got to rest. The world is in danger. I got to do something. Besides, I don't like that guy. Very, Very well, well, sirs. Please take care of our prince. Your Highness, good fortune be with you. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Right, let's go smash Golbez. Whoa. Crystal, whoa, look at all these crystals. Pitfall? What? You just fell down a hole? Oh yeah, what is this part? Yeah, okay, we walk into the tower's crystal room, mm-hmm. and as we're gonna walk up and be like, oh my god, finally, finally once in this game, we're gonna have a crystal in our hands. As we enter the room, some kind of trap floor appears and we fall down I guess all the way through the tower all the way to the underground part of the, the tower uh, downside neath yeah I mean what the fuck out of nowhere <laughs> Not like they were just this. like like they were like uh for this part of the story they need to be underground again like, like they just need to be there right now fall god damn it no ouch no no what do you mean? Did you like that dungeon you did twice? Do you want to do it a third time? <laughs> we really want to be out of this dungeon. <laughs> like, that's all we want. It's <laughs> got to do it again. Uh, Scott, why? Why? You were... It, why did they... That was a dick move. Because I bet the teleporters are going to turn on now and we're going to be able to go back and forth. Yeah, but we were in the room and it was all cool. They didn't even let us, like, take it in before it's back to walking around in the mainframe. I don't even know my way around here. Where am I supposed to go? I don't know. The route. The only way or something. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes it's so dense. Thankfully, there isn't a whole other dungeon. Uh, What there is, is we We walk into a door in the underground, and there's just an airship under there. Yeah, we're underground, and we walk right onto a new airship. Whoa! Whoa. New New airship? airship. Let's Let's take this airship and get out of the tower. 
It's not yours. That's okay. It, <laughs> it would be happy to be used by us. We can steal it anyway. Don't worry, I like this airship. Let's call it Falcon. How do you like that? <laughs> Wait, hey, calm down. Nobody said you could call it Falcon. Hurry, Edge. Okay, okay. Now go, Falcon. Fuck off. I mean, his name is Edge. You gotta give him a break. It rose out of the sand. It's the insane. airship rose out of the sand. It rose out of the sand into the underworld. We're uh, still under sand. Yeah, it, it rose out of the ground below the ground. Yeah. Which begs the question once again. What's below the underground? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? And why are all these airships buried? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> why the fuck is that a thing in these games? Airship coming out of the sand? Yeah. I don't know. What? What kind of nonsense thinking is that? I don't know, what is this? It's a butthole. It's a whole new butthole. Can you really not? How are you supposed to get in there? Are you gonna come out of the butthole? I mean, buttholes usually are for. Yeah, uh, there'll be some thing that happens. Oh, there we go. No, you can land. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. What? What it is, is an indication of where you can then go back up to the upper world. Yeah, this is like the crater left behind by Sid's explosion or something. It looks like an entrance to further under the underground. But it's just a dent, really, in the ground, I yes. guess. Yes, and anyway, we move on. Yeah. <laughs> and head back to the dwarf village. Can't fly over magma? Where's that strange man of the airship? Sid? He's dead. Maybe he's down here somewhere. Is that what they're saying? Is Sid alive? I don't know. Maybe he's in this castle somewhere. And he's going to be like, that's a beautiful airship. Let me make it heat resistant. Maybe, yeah, yeah. The hole to the upper world crumbled. The yeah, other day. they found they find the hospital. They found a strange man there. He's in the nursing room. We're the nurses, and we are girls. <laughs> All that person has. I like that uh, you can track what gender the nurses are in each of the towns. Yeah, that's. They're like, okay, welcome to our town. In this town, nurses are girls, and in this one, they're boys. Uh -huh. Here we are. We head to the dwarf's infirmary, and we find Sid laying in bed. Yeah, he's not dead, which people in our party have told us he died. They must be confused about it, too. It was unclear. <laughs> it was unclear at the time. It was and, unclear to the characters, yeah. unclear to the audience. But he's fine. He's fine. Oh, my God, Sid, you're not dead. Sid is alive. That strange old man does not act like an old man. That sounds like Sid to me. Yeah. Classic Food. Sid. How can these people eat such tasteless filth? Sid. Just looking at them makes me want to throw up. And the smell. <laughs> the smell. <laughs> Don't even get me started on that shit. You're okay. Good grief. Ha ha ha. Who is this little nuisance? I'm Edge, the renounced prince. Oh, Here look. Who's We're this guy? Who is this guy? <laughs> Let me introduce you around, Edge. I mean, I know that we've been telling you guys that this keeps happening over and over again, but at this point, don't you feel it too? We're not exaggerating. This happens... Oh my god! <laughs> it's just, like, constant. <laughs> oh god. He, he is, is a prince. prince. He is injured. Do not anger him. Henpeck, boy. See, this is banter, but it's not translated, and yeah. it's probably not good anyway. Do you think, yeah, yeah, like, it's probably not the world's greatest banter originally. <laughs> it's, like, just clunky and weird. So we continue to catch Sid up on everything that's happened, mm -hmm. and then Sid's like, you gotta go to the upper world, there's crystals there, and also, you need a heat-resistant shield on your ship, so I'm gonna make that. Yeah, he gives us a heat shield so that we can fly across the magma to the next place where the next crystal is. Right. Get ready, because I'm about to put a heat shield. We have no time to waste. I'm bummed that we haven't run into Hooray Guy. There is. I'm glad that you're okay, Guy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah. There's all new stupid NPCs to love. I think it's pretty weak that we fell down a hole we couldn't even see all the way down here. That was bullshit. And now we're yeah. doing this other thing that is yeah. extra. We were at What the... is this? I don't know. I thought we were chasing the guy to the moon, and now it's like, hey, we're by the way, there's the another crystal. crystal. 
He's down here again and he's going for the crystal. Like, what are you talking about? I thought he already got them all. I don't know, we're getting our airship all fixed up and it's, it's... We're gonna go over the magma, we're gonna go to the place, we're gonna do the thing. Maga. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna... Make this place great again. Make this fucking... <laughs> Whatever this world was called. We're making airship great again. Make airship great again. Maga. They need to, because Airship hasn't been great since Final Fantasy IX. <laughs> well, I know that in 15 it sucks. Yeah, it in, just keeps getting worse. What was In 12 it had, like, anchors? It's in 12 bad. it looks cool, but you don't get to fly it. Right. You just choose where you're going to go. <laughs> anyway, we really we need to make we'll Airship get there. great again. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. I think we're on to something. I would love a uh, t-shirt that was, make Airship great again, and that was like... <laughs> Just like a picture of the airship from 15 with like an X through it. Yeah, and... Like none of this. No, no flying car. Make airship great again. Make airship great again. It's a red hat. A hat that people will definitely mistake for like a Donald Trump hat, except for like the few people who are yeah. like, oh, it's a Final Fantasy joke. From afar, there's no way to know it's Final Fantasy. <laughs> exactly. It's south of here, I think. So now that we can fly over lava, mm -hmm. we find an isolated blacksmith, like, living in the corner of the underworld. Right. And his apprentices who are downstairs are like, the boss is not doing good. He's so depressed. He's upstairs in bed. Go talk to him. But he probably won't want to talk to you because he's depressed. Boss lost his confidence, Lolly. <laughs> oh, boy. I love that they had that on anything. You'd be like, go to work every day, Lolly. <laughs> it starts to become totally meaningless, Lolly. <laughs> Sometimes your youth starts to slip away. People don't look at you the same anymore, Lolly. <laughs> this is the home of the world's greatest blacksmith, Kakal Lolly. We're gonna wake him up. Be like, hey, how good are you? I'm not going to make another sword. Does he mean I'm not gonna say another word? <laughs> He can't even find the legendary or Adamant. Well, it all needs... feels like that sometimes. sometimes. Yeah, I get that. He can't even find... That's like me going like, I can't even win the lottery. Like, that's how unlucky I am. I think about this sometimes. Do you think, like, there are people out there who are, like, Bigfoot hunters who just... They've been at it for years and they're like, I can't even find Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, and they're just depressed must. about it. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't even find it. I can't, like... <laughs> He's how yeah. Can I do, how can I do anything? Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's gotta happen at least once or twice in that person's life. Well, where do you think we're gonna find adamant? In the adamant grotto? Yeah, we know where we're gonna find it. But how do we get it out of? We're gonna bring that guy a tail. I'm right, the tail, like, and then we get, thing. and then he's gonna give us the adamant, yeah. and then we're gonna bring it to the smith, and then we're gonna get the Excalibur yeah. or whatever it's gonna probably be. probably the Excalibur. I mean... It's gonna be a sword. We know that. It's gonna be made with adamant. Here we are. Item loop. The game. But this is the only one so far. No, no, no. I, I, I just mean... I don't even mean the game. I just mean... It's just like the old tasty item loop. The old, we keep that on the menu. We keep that on the menu at all times. Hey, like, come over here. So I can paint your face. So we make it to a new dwarf town. Tomra. Man, there's another dwarf village. Lolly ho? No, it's hi ho in here. And this one is slightly different from yeah. the other dwarf town. Here they say hi ho. They don't say lolly. Also, I don't know, it's like a cheaper town. Yeah, it's not like really like a castle. It's more of just like, like a collection. We're out here in the country. Yeah, a collection of mud huts. So these are like podunk dwarves. Are you? Not big city dwarves. Yeah, these are like. Out in the mines, like, this is like a mining town. Down in here, we don't say things like that straight. We don't there. take kindly to lolly ho, down motherfuckers. Here. Down here, we say hi ho. Came, Came from, from the upper world. world. Where's that? It's in the name. It's up above. Uh, should I buy a chain? That's gotta be better than the whip, right? Yeah, that's gotta be way better than the whip. So we get decked out with the top of the line gear that we can, mm -hmm. and we head to the sealed cave, which is where... I think it's supposed to be where we think the next crystal is. Right. Sealed cave. Well, if it's sealed, how am I gonna 
hold the key to unbind the seal. Then the way to the dark crystal will be open. Wow. Crack. So as we enter the sealed cave, one of the first things we see is a door, and I go up to open it. It's a trap door. Mm -hmm. It's a door that you fight that is literally a trap door. Trap door. Oh. Fuck. Whoa. <laughs> it's a trap door. That door is a monster. I like it. Uh. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> we should buy more of those. Dude, are they one-time use? Yeah. Fuck. Oh, fuck. Jesus. It's okay, it was the right move anyway. Oh, that was the wrong move. The trap door, I'm kicking its ass, but then it summons a manticore. I kill the trap door, and then the manticore just starts fucking me up, and I really start just making mistakes. You just are, like, not paying attention. You're yeah. not ready for this to be a hard fight, and it is. And, and, yeah, I'm just like, oh my god, what's happening? Hang the, on! The manticore is healed by, like, all magic. Yeah, it's... <laughs> and you keep casting on it. Yeah, I keep... I, over and over again, without realizing it, because I'm not paying close enough attention, Ryan's watching watching me heal the enemy every time I cast fire on him. Mm -hmm. And I just keep doing it. Not fire, not fire. Oh, oh shit. It's it, been healing him. God! <laughs> oh, no. Fuck! Oh, shit. I don't even know who I put that on. I think I put it on the wrong person. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> So when, the second I realize, like, I am not making it out of this fight, I go to try to run from the trap door, and it's a fight you cannot run from. Mm-hmm. You can't. Oh, my God! <laughs> wait, when was the last time I even I thought know. to save? I don't know, man. Wait, wait. wait. <laughs> what are you doing? You pause the game right here. Yeah, because you have pausing. two people left alive. They're both almost dead, and you're like, I have to make exactly the right moves, or I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 And then you unpause it, and you <laughs> fuck up again. <laughs> Boy, I fucked up. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> That was spectacular. Oh that my god. <laughs> oh my god, dude. That was so stupid. I can't believe I let that <laughs> happen number, like that. It was hard, and then also the number of blunders. The, just, the number just, of just blunders. Like, the number of blunders. <laughs> oh. In a cascading row. I don't know if you saved... I, don't know. I haven't saved in fucking forever, dude. I haven't. I don't remember the last time I've saved. Did you save ever? With the whole time you were playing. <laughs> I don't know. Because I, I don't think I've saved I since I got it back I was from in the you. middle of that dungeon and then I walked out of it. And then I gave it to you. <laughs> Load it up. Dude, I don't even know. <laughs> Load it up. Oh, man. Load it up. Ha! <laughs> God. Well, let's get back oh, there, man. What do you mean? It's only eight o'clock. Uh, I, well, I, I, give me a second. Fuck, dude. Fuck. 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 And that's where we're gonna end episode eight. <laughs> We're, I mean, we're all the way back in the Tower of Babel. I know. It's, Edge hasn't killed his parents yet. I know. <laughs> How many fucking episodes of this season end with us going like, and the whole thing was a waste? Um. Well, this is this the third one in a row? This is the, no, no, we've had, I think, uh, two since then. Okay, right. Yeah. I know that there's going to be more of them before this season's over. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, there was a lot of, like, forgetting that we need to save. Yeah. And just, like, backtracking. <laughs> backtracking, being like, fucking god damn it. But it was always our fault. It was definitely always our fault. So with that, please rate and review us on iTunes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Find us at noonecanknowaboutthis.com or at nocatpodcast on Twitter or mm -hmm. nocatpodcast at gmail.com. Consider heading on over to patreon.com slash nocat and supporting us that way. You can get the episodes early. 
We're going to have some really fun stuff next season for that. Yeah, in the future, we're going to reward you for rewarding us. Yeah. It's going to be a whole cycle it's that you'll become a part of. A virtuous cycle of rewards. <laughs> we'll see you all next week for episode nine. It's going to be a good one. Yeah. But first, here's a little taste of next week. Uh, no one can know about this. Any other thoughts that you want to share before we kick this thing off? God, I mean, I don't know. I feel like we're going to have to re-record this whole thing. Like, <laughs> what are we even saying right now? Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy game. I'm going to make us do it over and over again because I don't remember how to do it. <laughs> Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy game. I'm Jeff Ekman. I'm Ryan Kazmiski. And here we go. It's season two. It's season two. Are you ready to go back in time? Go back in time all the way to January of 2018. And talk to ourselves in the past. Yeah, tell ourselves some information that we wish we had back then. What and are, <laughs> learn some things about our future. You know, I mean, look, Marcus Aurelius said you wouldn't want to live forever <laughs> because you would just be watching the same pattern repeat over and over. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and so, so he is our podcast's mascot, because Marcus this is Aurelius, be... Emperor of Rome. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I think we need to do it again. Okay. Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy. I'm Jeff Ekman. And I'm Ryan Kazmiski. And it, this is a second time loop. The time loop was in Final Fantasy 1 was broken. Right. But our own time loop <laughs> is still not living. broken. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be sent back in time over and over again. <laughs> To play the same basic game, but a little bit different. Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy. The pattern repeats. The pattern repeats. Well, I think you just hit the theme of the whole podcast, Life Repeats. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, time is a loop. Yeah, I don't know. Would Marcus Aurelius play every Final Fantasy game or just one of them? I don't know. Because all roads lead to Final Fantasy. It's true. I think we should record this one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy game. I'm Jeff Ekman. I'm Ryan Kazmiski. It's season two, episode one. We're kicking it off. I think we're going to get it right this time. You know, I liked the last one, but as we discussed in the last one, it's the small differences that make all the difference, right? Right, yeah. So in this loop of the opening, what do you think we're going to say different? Well, I kind of like the Marcus Aurelius thing. You know, it's like on a cosmic level, you know, looking at the world is just a pattern that's repeating, I guess, <laughs> whether it be waves or particles. I'm not sure where the scientists landed on that. Sometimes waves sometimes particles, always a pattern. Time is repeating again Time for the second time. Right, but not in the game in real life. Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy. I'm Jeff Ekman. I'm Ryan Kazmiski. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, is that like there's the time repeating of the game playing. There's the time repeating of the opening. There's the time repeating of I go to the bathroom more than once a day. There's a time repeating of I wake up every day. It just is uh -huh. like there's many circles inside of the circle. Right. And everything is repeating. Welcome to No One Can Know About This, <laughs> podcast for play over Final Fantasy. I'm saying the intro this time. Uh-huh. No, I'm, I'm good. <laughs>